All right, yo, hello everyone, and welcome back to the motherfucking podcast. If you're new, welcome to the motherfucking podcast. Of course, I'm your host, Fluff, and you have now tuned in to the Out of Fluff podcast. Boy, congratulations. I don't know how your degenerate ass made it here, but you're here. And thank you. Cool. Shit. Of course, it's February of the 2024s, so obviously it's Black History Month. To all my fellow melanin people out there in the world, snow. Happy Black History Month, bro. (laughs) I don't know how many people actually celebrate it, but whatever. (laughs) Whatever, bro. Like. For this, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep my glasses on. I don't think I'm just going to take my glasses off until I have to read. There's a little segment in here that I got to read, but whatever. We'll get to that point when we get to that point. But, dude, I hope that y'all are all doing well. I hope everything's been going well with y'all. Me, it's been pretty chill. I mean, I can't really complain that much. So, I don't, I don't really have anything to say. I've been working this past, like, month. School's about to start on the 20th for me, so I think what I got to do now is just mainly, I may have to drop this job and just mainly focus on school, because your boy's on probation off off of the simple fact that I wasn't fucking with teachers, okay? A lot of the professors, whenever you get into, like, the school, for some reason, they think that it's still okay to try to treat you as you're like a kid like i'm a grown-ass adult but it was off of the it was off of the simple situation of i'm gonna put these back on because i can't see shit it was off of the simple situation of what happened was that i was going to go into school for culinary because your boy can cook so (laughs) i don't know what that was but i feel like doing that but Nah, I can I can actually cook. I mainly make barbecue stuff and stuff like that. So like burgers, ribs, steak, anything that could be thrown on a grill. I'd make it like on a grill or I can make it in the stove. Doesn't matter to me. I'm more southern. So I have almost all the barbecue expertise that I need to have to be able to make a bomb ass fucking meal. And then also I make other stuff, too. I can make some like uh, Asian foods and stuff like that. I can make. Well, probably I would, I would need help from my girl because my girl is Mexican, but I would need help from her. And then I can be able to make some like Mexican stuff as well, too. But yeah. So anyways, your boy was going to go into cooking because I was going to be a chef. But um, nah, man, the teachers kind of pissed me off. And then I wasn't liking the mentality that chefs kind of have. It's too it's too similar to the military. Especially with the whole yes chef, no chef. Um, I'm not a fan of it. I know like it's it's meaning for like order because you need stuff done in a certain way to be able to get it out to the customer as fast as possible, as best as possible. Blah blah blah. Not me. I wasn't fucking with it. So she tried to basically my professor tried to keep that going, like while in a class of like, oh, this is what you're gonna be doing, like you know, whenever you're whenever you get like a job. I wasn't fucking with it. And then I was on like the fence about it until the day where I showed up at exactly the time of when the class started and she locked the door on me. And then her little sous chef came up talking about, oh, you need to wait until after prep dog. She does like a whole prep thing and takes literally almost like the 40, like 45 minutes to do. I'm not standing out there. For 45 fucking minutes. And being like. Oh okay I'm gonna stick my fucking thumb up my ass. And I'll just wait here. Like no dude. I I left. I was like dog fuck this. I'm leaving. Like I'm, I'm not standing here. For waiting. Because I was on time. And I don't give a fuck what anybody says. If the. If your job starts. At say like. 8 o'clock. 
and you show up at eight o'clock, you're on time. Dog, I don't I don't know where the whole people think that you're late comes from. If it's that same time, I am just perfect with time, bitch. You ever thought about that? I'm not showing up early. Be I'm just good with time. So I'm going to show up on time at that time. And then go from there. I take like a, I take, you know, precautions and stuff of like, you know, my walk speed is cruise control. So I walk slower than other people, I guess that you could say. But I take it, I take account for that too. And then, you know, I'll, I'll make it to where I'm at that door or I'm inside that place directly at that time. But yeah, nah, dude, I, I, I I can't deal with that. That was like my last straw. I was like, dude, fuck this shit. Like, if this is how they basically act out and like work, then nah, bro, fuck it. And then on top of that, I don't need to go to school to be a chef, anyways. Um, I didn't I didn't learn much of fucking dick inside that class except for the different knife cuts, and then that's it. That's that's literally it. That's all I learned. Because after you learn knife cuts, then you just start going into cooking and stuff. And they don't even like, you just follow a recipe and then that's it. So nah, dude, fuck that, bro. Anybody that's going, going to school and doing like culinary, unless like you're in like a top school or you're doing like something that's international to where you're cooking more fancier, like etiquette, elegant or whatever the fuck word type of food then at that point yeah go for it bro but dog if you're in a community college taking culinary classes bro just go get a job just go be a dishwasher and then you'll learn after there because that it at this point it doesn't it doesn't really make sense and plus go to go be a dishwasher at some of these uh restaurants that is like more fancy because some of these restaurants dog they're just hiring community service people to do dishwasher stuff. And then that's it. Because nobody wants to actually be a fucking dishwasher. So you can be a dishwasher at a fine ass place. Then go. And like from there, you just get promoted up and then you actually become like a chef. Like you talk to them and be like, yo, I actually want to be Chef Boy RD. So let me go ahead. Let me grab the knife and let me drive the boat, basically. You just go from there because if you're in community college, dog, you're just wasting your money. Me personally, since I'm a vet, they pay for it. So they're wasting their money, not mine. But other than that, dog, if you're doing culinary, just go get a job, <laughs> bro. Just just go get a job, please. But yeah, dog. But I am still going to school, though. I would be working to be in. Uh, or we'll study in business and then I might do a minor inside of uh not inside of her a minor in uh marketing as well. But yeah, dog. Gotta get that education, bruh. Since it's black history month, niggas. Get y'all fucking education, dog. Getting tired of hearing niggas working in warehouses. Like, bro. Like one of my homies, uh, Lump, which I'm actually going to talk about him more later on, is working in the warehouse. But dude, dude was a system admin inside of like the military and he was actually good at his job. But now he's more along the lines of doing warehouse bullshit. But that's on him. You can't control people's lives. So all I do is support a nigga from a distance, really, because he lives like across the whole fucking country. But yeah. But nah. Matter of fact, I was speaking on this man. Actually, um how can I put it? I punched the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah. I ended up punching the shit out of him one time off of the simple fact that he he brought in a person into the car that was 
very questionable. And I felt like it was life threatening to me. He's probably going to hear this and think bullshit. But hey, hey, I'm the one telling the story, dog. So listen, for all y'all people out there. There's no we were out in uh, Oki because we we're stationed out in Oki. So we went to this place called AV and is named American Village. But we call it AV. Went there. We was drinking the whole time, you know, doing a regular degular of day drinking, spending money, knowing damn well we ain't got money to spend. Ooh. Just to show up that formation and tell them that I ain't got forty dollars or like twenty dollars or ten dollars or whatever to get my hair cut. It was something along the lines like that. I I come back from a weekend being broke as hell, living on that child hall food, but. Nah, what happened? What happened was is that as we were leaving and we were about to go back because we had a curfew, we ended up picking up one of one of our friends, and then she had a friend that was a gay dude. All right, bro is like like this tall, bro. Compared to like if I was standing up, he was like this much taller than me. All right, so automatically he's a six foot black man and there is it he's 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 big too so he's a big six foot black man take that into perspective okay so he in the car and he's doing his his gay shit that he always does and this time though i'm drunk so he was trying to like you know be gay towards me and i'm like dog bro we're not doing that and he kept pushing so then i was like bro i escalated it hella quick so i will say that i probably escalated this part pretty quick but honestly whenever you're having you can't you're in a vehicle you're in a metal circle or cylinder and you're inside that bitch and you can't move nowhere and you just got a gay nigga that's just all like trying to be all on you and shit nah bro i slapped him right I slapped him hard as shit in the back of the head. Dude turns around, looks at me dead in my soul, in my eyes, bro, and said, Hmm, I like that shit. Nigga, what? What? So immediately, I, I just started ignoring that nigga and did not talk to him because I was like, bro, who put this gay nigga inside the car? So I boiled it down to where I was like, oh, it's Ramirez's friend. So this is Ramirez's fault. But then I was like, wait a minute. We wasn't even with them the whole time. So I went to the two dimensional nigga lump. It's this nigga's fault. So now I'm like, bro, nah, I got a little beef with you because you don't brought this gay nigga in the car. Like, this is your fault at this point. So after we dropped them off, we started arguing because I told him, I was like, bro, don't ever bring that gay nigga around me again. Because that was a, he basically was passing and crossing like lines that I just didn't need to be passed. Bro. I, that shit just did not need to get passed. So what we ended up doing was is that we got all the way to the room. Cause what I was gonna do, I was gonna do a little hit and run. So I was gonna slap him and close my door. But I'm drunk, so I ended up slapping him. And then I didn't close the door fast enough, or actually, matter of fact, I didn't even reach for the door handle. So he ended up slapping me back and like scraped my eye, and I was like, oh man, fuck this nigga. <laughs> fuck him. So then I ended up basically, like, I ended up pushing him out into the steps that was outside. And, like, I tried to kick his leg. I missed because I didn't even know that I missed. I didn't even know that I, like, tried to kick my leg towards him. I just woke up in the morning and my pinky toe was hurting like a bitch. So this is from what I was told. I tried to kick him. Then I also apparently tried to throw him off of the third, uh, what we call it, third deck or the store, 
He was three stories high, just knowing I tried to throw him off of the side of the steps. It was grass, so I figured that, you know, he would still live. But, nah, man. Then after that, we ended up, people ended up pulling us inside and stuff like that. And then, I don't know what he said, or he was, like, still talking shit, because this is what we do on the regular. So then he said something. I ended up throwing a punch, landed a punch right here. It was crazy. And then they ended up splitting us up. Woke up in the morning, my pinky toe hurts. I looked at this nigga. He was he was mad at me. He was mad at me for probably like a good, I'd say like week or two, and then he got it, he got over it because that's what we do. But yeah, nah. He has like a big he had like a big like lump on his face. And I couldn't make the joke of saying, look, lump, you got a lump. Cause I'm the nigga that made the lump. And then on top of that, it wasn't it wasn't just the right vibes, okay? People were trying to tell me to say sorry to him. I didn't say sorry. I still to this day haven't said sorry. All for the sheer fact. He's a nigga. That's it. Niggas just don't say sorry to each other. I don't know what it is or what about it. That's just it is what it is. Unless, like, it's, like, truly something that's completely fucked up. Then, yeah, at that point, I say sorry. But this isn't really fucked up because this isn't the first altercation to where either me or him tried to, like, hit each other. It's just this time it actually landed a hit. Like, this man before has tried to fight me because uh, he was going on about talking about being, like, a blood. I think this is, like, one of the first times that I ever fully drunk with this man. He was talking about, yeah, I'm a blood, blood, blood this, blood that. Where's my block? Where's my bocklet big bookies? And stuff like that. So I'm like, I'm fuck with him. Because the niggas that I mainly more grew up with fucked with like folk. So I told him, I was like, yeah, you know, fuck. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Fuck bloods, nigga, folk nation out here, and I threw up the the fucking uh the little sign. I'm not gonna throw it up on here off of the simple fact of no, <laughs> no. But I threw I threw it up, and then me and my uh, my other homie uh, Griffin Griffin, he fucked more with like Crips. So it was me and him just fucking with him talking about uh. Fuck bloods again. Then we started talking about you know it don't even fucking matter because now we're in now we're in the Marine Corps so you're not shit. <laughs> and he started telling him that he wasn't shit and he tried to get mad and stuff and like try to like throw throw some like punches. But I'm more sober at this point and he's a two dimensional nigga compared to me. So it was easy. I would just like throw him to the side. I think one time he like he connected like one punch. But it was like a very weak punch. I just threw him inside the bathroom and closed the door. Come to find out that his hand was actually bleeding after that. But I seen it as not my fault. Again. But then again, we barely we barely take any blames. So fuck it. Whatever. Just leave it out like that. But yeah, man. Ah, those be still friends with him to this day. Yeah. Would I say best friend? No, because I think men, uh, you don't you don't have best friends. You see, either you have you have acquaintance, friend, and then brother. That's it. There, there is no. I I see it as men don't have best friends. So it's kind of weird whenever you ask like a dude of like who's their best friend. Like, nah, you just have friends, or you have what we call fam, or who we call as like brothers. So that's a whole different topic. But yeah, man. That's the homie, though. Got going to be going to Miami this. Uh, this what you call it this year for our little Oki reunion. Yeah, we had one last year. Pretty dope. We did it in San Diego. Now we're doing it in Miami. But yeah. 
But it's, you know, nowadays, I feel like for me, I stick with more of like my friends that I've gotten from the military off of the sheer fact that we were together and seen each other for like at least two years. So it's, it's pretty crazy. But getting like friends now is hard. I mean, after, after like leveling up through your life in each level, it just seems like it becomes harder and harder to end up either keeping a friend or making a new friend. Like, it's just, at this point, dog, I stay in, I, I mean, I really just stay inside. I don't go outside that much off of the sheer fact of I don't really like people, even though my job is a salesman, that's different. I'm doing it for work and I don't have a problem with actually interacting with people. It's just the sheer, it's the sheer thought of meanly, meaninglessly, what the meaning, meaningless conversation. There you go. Meaningless conversation with random people is that's, that's something that I just don't like, don't prefer. And to get a friend, I feel like you have to start off with having that meaningless conversation. And I don't consider people that you work with friends until the point to where I'm hanging. I meet up with them to hang out outside of any work related activities. Because at that point, you're an acquaintance because you're just you're like a you're you're a work buddy. You're a person that I'll talk to. But you won't really know much fully about me. Like, you'll know about my work history and my work past because that all pertains to work and what I want to do in the future. And that's even for some people. But you will never know of, like, how I am outside of work. And it's, it's like, y'all one of the motherfuckers that end up watching, like, my podcast. Then at that point, y'all end up knowing more about me, but I still don't know basically more about y'all of how y'all are outside of work. So, in the end, it's still acquaintances until I get to the point where we hung out a couple of times. Because then after hanging out a couple of times, then yeah, we are friends. Ooh. And then if you get to the point to where, like, you know, we're, like, we're speaking to each other closer, I wouldn't say the daily basis, but closer to along the lines of, like, almost, like, every every week or like multiple times throughout the week or majority of the week we are speaking in some type of way then yeah i would consider you more as like a brother at that point that's how i have like levels and shit but finding new friends is hard bro and people are weird these days like i don't know what it is but like people are just on a different level weird or it's just me growing up more to where I could see more of the weirdness. And then I'm like, do I really want to tolerate this? Yes or no. So it's like, it's like that. So that's why I like the whole phrase of like friends are seasonal comes into play because people are legit just seasonal, especially acquaintances and like, uh, co-workers and shit like that. Dog, they're 100% seasonal people. Because after you leave that work, you're not going to talk to them. They'll try to be like, oh, still hit me up and stuff like that. Never able to hit you up or anything like that. Unless you hit them up first. But even so, you, what's the odds that you actually going to hit them up? Like you, you ended up leaving the job or they left the job for a reason. And then they don't want to be basically remembered about that reason. So they're you, may, most likely you're not going to end up having work friends as actual friends at any point in time. So, I mean, it's just realizations of like that. Like, I don't I could probably have more friends if I went to like a gym more, like go to like a gym, like a small gym. I could have more friends if I went to like an actual club, I would say, You'd say like um. Like if I was to go to like jujitsu all the time and stuff like that, then 
at that point, I would start to consider them more as friends because you're doing something along the lines of you not trying to make money and you're just doing it for fun. And they have the same interest as you, which is they're doing it for fun as well, too. So it's a little bit different, but I'm not going, I'm not doing all that shit, bro. Should I? Possibly. Yeah. Am I? No, not really. So, I mean, it is what it is. But nowadays, people are too weird to end up trying to make them as friends. And then you getting to know a person, too, is beyond my capacity of giving a fuck. I, honestly, like, getting to, like, know a whole brand new person, and then you're like, oh, this person is pretty cool, like, want them to be like as a friend no i never think of it like that i'm like oh this person's pretty cool and that's it <laughs> is the rap i'm not thinking about the whole friend thing because being friends with, with people and then like you start to get to like know them more it's just it's too much remembering bro that's i think that's why like men have an easier time than like women even though i i don't like to go into like gender specifics but for us dudes, I mean, as videos be saying, bro, I don't even know homie's name until about the third time <laughs> that I met him. I'd be like, yo, bro, what is your name? I've been calling you homie this whole time. He'd be like, oh, yeah, my name's Jeff. Oh, what's up, Jeff? Still forget, bro, because I still keep calling him homie. I just know I got his name once. That's all I need. But even that is a little bit too much. So I don't know. That's just that's just for me. But let's see here. Talked about that. Oh, before we get into the real geeky nerdy shit, there's one more thing for Black History Month. Uh, I actually wanted to go through and kind of show y'all or let y'all ears listen to my voice on the part of kind of like a little segment it's a little i found well i wouldn't even say find i searched and clicked on the first tab that i seen and i was talking about for uh african americans how can i put it african americans that we don't really know much about that did something that was pretty kind of spectacular i guess you could say i didn't type that in google i typed uh african inventors or african-american inventors that are not well known basically so here we go let's celebrate black history month for a little bit all my fellow nigglets so first one's up we got is his name is Elijah McCoy, born in the year of 1844, and he lasted until 1929. Hey, he almost lasted 100 years. Good on him. But basically, his invention was uh, automatic lubricator. The phrase, the real McCoy. I don't know what that phrase means, and I'm not sure what a lubricator is. So we're going to skip this. But yeah, he invented that shit. Oh, Garrett Morgan. Some of y'all heard about him. Some of y'all haven't. But Garrett Morgan, uh, born in the year of 1877, lasted until 1963. He also lived for almost 100 years, too. Damn. I didn't know people from this far back lived, lived this old. I thought they died at around like 60 or 70. Damn. But no, Garrett Morgan, uh, I hate that they said the safety hood because it just reminds me of he was like the safety nigga in the hood. Anyways, he made the traffic lights. He or she, not fully sure. I'm not reading through that. Oh, it's a he right here. Yeah, homie made uh, traffic lights. So he's just mitigating fucking car crashes at this point, man. To this day, he's mitigated car crashes. That's all it is. Next up, we have 
uh, Alice Parker, born in 1895, and apparently the, the bitch is still alive, because how do you not know when they died? What, what the fuck? So Alice Parker is still alive to this day, so she is not black, she's an alien, but apparently she made natural gas heating system. So the black alien made uh, a heating system. Kind of fucked up to say. Dude, this is a long ass name. I think this is two people. Mary Van Britton Brown. What the fuck? It's either your name was dumb long or or they couldn't decide on which name and they put both of them in there. The choice is y'all's. The choice is y'all. But basically, she made the home security system. From, from what I remember and read, she was actually a nurse. So, yeah, a nurse basically invented home security. Good on her. That's pretty dope. Because you, you have to know that nurses at, I think nurses at all times are hella busy. And she found the time to make an actual security system. So good on her. Uh, big bees, big bees out here. Dr. Balls, uh, brew or AKA Dr. Charles drew. Uh, he and made it the, he invented the blood bank. So for any of y'all that don't know what a blood bank is, is basically, uh, oh, y'all niggas thought I was going to give y'all the answer, huh? Nope. Cause I don't know either. But it had something to deal with like medical stuff and putting blood in bags and shit like that. But there you go. All right. Oh yeah, I stopped saying there. I stopped saying the years that they lived, huh? Ah, fuck it. We'll keep rolling with it. Otis Boy Boy Kent. Look, I don't know what type of last name that is, but that is wild. Just know Mr. Boy Ken over here invents a resistors, electronic control panels for pacemaker. I don't know what a pacemaker is, but uh I know for a fact that making electronic control panels is pretty fucking useful right now. And that man has basically <laughs> helped develop so many fucking different things. Kudos on this man. Who would have known he was so smart? My God, you go, boy, Ken. But yeah, that's just six of them. A little few. I just wanted to give a little segment just for uh, all the people that passed and the one that's still alive to this day. Some credit. So, kudos on them. I'd just like to say thank y'all for, thank all the black inventors, doctors, lawyers, teachers, construction people, anybody that's actually doing something to help the economy, the environment, or anything like that. Thank y'all. This month is y'all month, not the month for the niggas. This is for actual African African American people that are doing something to either help progress the world or help the world be a better place or just any anything that's helping wise. Kudos to y'all. This is y'all month. For us niggas, it's not our month, bro. It's not our month. We don't get a month. We are nigglets. Let's keep it pushing. Let's keep it trucking. And now, now that we're gone out of the whole real life stuff, our kind of so one one pertains to more real life stuff. But let's get into the more geeky nerd shit, okay? Solo leveling, holy shit! Is solo leveling n not only just doing good, but the show looks fucking spectacular. I will say 
the animated snake has nothing compared to that uh to the manhua uh or webtoon snake that he fights just to let y'all know i think it's on the fourth episode of where he fights that snake but just know soul 11 is really good and we need as a as the anime community we need solo leveling to do amazing it needs to be basically anime of the year let me explain if solo leveling crashes and there's a downfall that means possibly which i i honestly don't care for this first one because i think that the story is just not that good. But God of High School, there will there won't be no more animated God of High School. There won't be a season two of Tower of God. Well, there'll be a season two, but there won't be a season three. But Tower of God is really good. And I need that whole story to happen. And I swear to fucking God, for the people that are making Tower of God. Hell train art cannot be shorter. Than three seasons. The whole Hell Train arc cannot be shorter than three seasons. Hell Train arc, it should have almost the equivalent episodes of a One Piece arc. I would say possibly um any any's lobby in Water Seven. Around like those type of numbers of episodes just for the hell train arc. you can extend it out to a possible length of whole cake or wano but just know it's a long ass arc that shit cannot be done in one season or two seasons three is possible but it cannot be done just in 24 episodes it needs at least I would say at least 36 max you can get it done. I would say maybe 45. 45 or 46 episodes. That's just all for Hell Train Arc. But back to the main topic, solo leveling. We without solo leveling, those would end up getting canceled. And then Manhwa's and webtoons that are actually really really good like unordinary is one of the first ones that come into mind uh hardcore leveling warriors was pretty good ghost who is pretty good terror man really good i like the terror man uh story not a big fan of the other story that goes with terror man just terror man's part in general um there's just so many other good manhwas that are out there and this is like the breaking point to where we can get manhwas out i'm not a big fan of the chinese bullshit i would say the ones that are action are pretty good and well animated but the comedy or the what any of the ones where they're talking a lot it just doesn't hit the same but 100 percent, yeah and for for uh webtoons and manhwas 100 this is this is the chance right here that they need so they need solo leveling to do really well or they're not going to get any of their other shit actually published so for the korean audience back there if y'all ever hear this or see this just know Y'all niggas need to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Bro, there is... Who gives a fuck if the studio had a past and did something? That studio right now is doing a really good job on solo leveling. There is no reason for y'all to complain about it. because the And y'all taking them out of the credits is kind of crazy. So just know, don't fuck with y'all own shit. Don't ruin something that y'all can literally 
end up competing with Japan over because there's a lot of really good manhwas. <laughs> Don't fuck yourselves over. This is literally y'all shot and y'all chance right here. The first two of God of High School and Tower of God were just kind of like they're up there. Yes, in popularity, yes. But for people that read manhwa, which is a huge amount, this is the chance. This is the gateway into all the rest of the popular manhwas. So yeah. This is this is what we need. And then also on top of that, it could be a trio thing, just like, you know, Bleach, Naruto, and One Piece. This can be the big three for Manhua if it's solo leveling, Tower of God, and Boo 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 Foo fucking God of High School. Now, I can line these up specifically in which ones they would go with. So, like, solo leveling would be kind of almost equivalent to Bleach. To be honest, Tower of God, the way that the story is, is 100% equivalent to, it can be equivalent to One Piece. And God of High School, which is for all those power, power leveling scalers, the huge fandom or them liking certain characters and shit like that. All that. It's got a high school. Y'all cannot tell me that the Manhua trio would not go hard either. Because all they need to do for God of High School is make really good animation. It's literally what people want, is literally what people look for nowadays, especially new people. And y'all can't tell me that God of High School would not fit that criteria. Solo Leveling has a, has a story. It's a pretty small story compared to the other two, but it's actually really good. It just fits more for Bleach. Is if it it's like Bleach. Because honestly, the Bleach story is not really that long. It's not as long as like Naruto and uh, One Piece. And Solo Leveling is on the same boat. That it's not that long as Tower of God and God of High School. And then Tower of God and One Piece, I wouldn't, they're not identical. But they have the same aspects of it's a long ass story, but it's a really good ass story. Shit ties together. Shit is actually kind of making sense. It's different. Completely different from what a lot of other stories are doing. And it's just it's so developed. There's so much world building. There's so much character development. So, yeah, that will be the Monwash trio. Solo leveling, Tower of God, and God of High School. But Korean fans do not fuck this up for y'all. Don't complain. Just keep supporting. And y'all will eventually basically get so much more fucking stories out. So yeah. But then it's gonna drive in a whole different wave of Kind of like Isekai, but they Koreans do more of like the game format shit, or they'll have more a stories that's along the lines of like that to where it's like artifacts and shit, and not just like some Isekai to where you're like feeling like it's an MMO type of type of deal. So yeah, I know it's it's a little bit different, but the same at the same time. But I prefer those. So yeah. <coughs> Telling y'all, man. Solo leveling is the gateway into more manhwas being actually animated. So yeah. 100%. I support 
so lovely. Not only because it's a really good story and the characters are dope, but also it it needs it needs this hype. <laughs> it needs more hype so we can get more shit out of webtoons and manhwas. So we can stop having stupid animes like that time I got reincarnated as a vending machine or whatever the fuck that shit's called. Like, dude, why? When it's just, it's just so much more. Like, Overgeared would be a pretty good one to get animated. I might start just listing out a whole bunch of manhwas. Uh, the Northern Blade would be pretty dope. Nano Machine would be hella fucking dope. Um, there's just a lot. There's, there's so much. Tomb Raider uh, King would be pretty dope too, even though I feel like it's kind of repetitive. But I, I could I could see a fan base running back behind that, for sure. And then there's a lot, and then they do like a lot of apocalyptic shit as well that we don't really see that much. Like instead of them going to a world, it's more along the lines that shit is coming to the world and they have to deal with it. Like, there's one that's like a zombie one, I think it's called. But it's not called Real Life. It's where it's like they have powers, but then there's also zombies that also have powers as well, too. So it's kind of crazy. But yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of really good fucking stories out there, man. I can go on and on. I can pull up this phone and actually see, like, what the fuck I've been reading. But yeah. Dude, there, there's a lot of really good stories, and I'm getting tired of the, of a lot of shonens just getting just straight love too. So, yeah, and talking about on just showing love, man, I'm, there needs to be like a like a studio, possibly just like you can just run it off of like YouTube or something like that. Or if I had the money, I would start a studio and run it strictly off of YouTube, and it will be by, it will only have animated stuff from smaller artist so it's it's like how, how could i put it it's more along the lines of something that basically people have been wanting to get animated for so long but they just decide not to pick it up and animate it and just do stuff like that and there's already completed stories that haven't been animated so they could just pick out the completed ones they can either decide the studio can just decide whether it be a movie or whether it be a little series that they do because they can do either one but yeah dude that would it would bring in a whole lot more different stories a whole lot of uh shit that just hasn't been like talked about or done yet and but of course like there's youtube guidelines so you can't really do a lot of the crazy horror mature shit but there's a lot that you can do that just hasn't been animated like the sumo wrestling one i don't think it's been animated yet that would be a really dope one to animate um just kind of going off of the top of my head berserk they're finally trying to do berserk but then again berserk is kind of questionable like Sakamoto Days doesn't have an anime yet, which I feel like it may have one pretty soon. I just hope it's not one of those mangas that get like so much chapters and like they get attention, but they just don't get animated. That'd be really make shitty. But there's like there's like quite a bit. And I know for more like the nerd people, they could just come up with like 10 off the top of their head for like especially the manga readers they could just do 10 right off the top of their head of like oh this 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 like so i don't know i feel as though especially like for us americans we can also do that as well so you can have a studio that's legit doing like animes but they also do comics as well because there is like more shit that can be animated that we can watch. Like 
I want to see more of Squirrel Girl. I want to see more of like Spawn, all the different like comics that a lot of people haven't really heard of as well too. Because they have the the what's the what's the one that they have? I think it's called Saturday AM or something like that. It's another place for people that have like comics. Because I've seen like for me trying to learn how to draw. I seen people do fucking they'll they'll be drawing their characters and then they'll be talking about it. But it's like never seen this shit before in my life. And they're like, oh yeah, you can read my comic on like this this shit. So I mean there's there's so much more that's out there. Just giving more people more attention and more love. I think we end up helping out because it feels like a lot of the corporations and shit, they tend to stick to like certain people and it's kind of it's kind of bs but i feel as though having something that's like a small studio and you're just doing like some of their stuff it ended up working out and then it might actually help for those other people to land like a pretty good job because of the fact of oh shit like their story was actually really good like why didn't we actually pay attention to this oh Oh, I just re- I just remembered another really good one that needs to be animated is the beginning after the end. That was one that I was trying to think. Of. That's a really good fucking story. That that would be some shit that would come out and it would hit like as hard as either like Attack on Titan, Demon Slayer. Like I will put that story up on like the pedestal with. Like grace like that. Animate that shit, dog. So fucking good. And then there's so much of that story too. But yeah, I w- I would definitely say those 100 percent But do 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 solo leveling, please do well. Please. So I can get more good stories. Cause I really want to see beginning after the end animated. And then if I get enough money one day, I will start a studio and hire people to do like the animations. I even hire like voice actors and shit because all you got to do is basically just you're you're animating it. So you're following the script that's already in place for you. So really, I just see it as you need animators. And you need voice actors. And you also need people that do sound shit. Like, I don't know what they're called. I'm just going to call them the sound cue people. I think that's really about it. Honestly, I would, I'll get a studio and I would hire probably around a good, like, 50 people. I think that's, that would be good enough to kind of, like, you know, start with. But, of course, like, I'm saying it in the, in the aspect of I basically got, like, I basically got like good like three mil that I can drop on this studio to just get it started up and then you just run it strictly off of YouTube and pay like the animators and stuff and the voice actors actual like livable wage and shit. So yeah, 100 percent I'm gonna do it. When when I get that money, I'm gonna do it. Start my own fucking studio, dog. Fuck fuck them. And I can market that bitch myself. Fuck. We ball. <laughs> but yeah. But I like how a lot of people has been getting more into watching anime. Or even like playing games as well too. Gaming has came a long way. I would say. But nowadays it feels like gaming is kind of. I would say it's not falling off. I would say it's changing. And that's all for the sheer fact of people. I feel like a lot of people. Like they play like sports games and stuff like that. Of course. Like that community is always going to be large. But I feel like now like. For FPSs, it's just going downhill, bro. Like. You we have the finals that came out. And. It's an amazing game. 
there's hardly any complaints from it. A lot of people love it. But now the player base has fallen because people either go back to playing regular games that they played, their addiction games, as I call them, or they move on and follow whichever streamers is playing the new hot game that it is, which currently right now is Power World. So you have a lot of you have a lot of streamers that are like huge streamers, not just like regular streamers in general, but like basically one percent streamers that are not playing the finals now and they're playing Power World. And you have that dedicated fan base that goes from playing the finals with the streamer and try to like join the streamer and stuff like that into playing Power World. And it's like, you know, it, it seems like a lot of people following other people now instead of people actually playing games that they enjoy to play. That's how I feel like. So for FPS is it's hitting it's hitting that shit hard. It's hitting that shit hard as fuck. Because we having games that come out that are really good that just die. Like Splitgate came out. It was really good. And the next thing you know we just stop playing it. Like for myself, I'm guilty, bro. I really like the game, but we just stopped playing it off of the fact that we're like, okay, we're going to grind a game and we're going to like do well in rank or good enough in rank. Like we're like for my friends, since they're kind of ass, we kind of strive to get plat as a group together. But some of us, we can hit like diamond without some of the people but some of the people can't even hit can barely hit gold without us so we should kind of, we just strive to hit plat you just say it like that so like we was i think we switched from split gate to go back to apex to hit plat in apex or it was hitting plat in siege which siege it's pretty difficult to hit plat in siege honestly from because you never know what the fuck who is cheating what angles that they got what do they know it's pretty crazy but yeah i would i would say they're they're pretty dying siege is not dying off of the sheer facts of jinxie is carrying the fuck out of siege right now which shout out to jinxie because without him carrying siege the game would have died i because i i predicted that the game was going to die around 2024 2025 and they wasn't going to hit their mark of them wanting to have 50 operators on each side to have 100 operators in total that you can use but bless jinxie He's doing it. Um, Narcolyptic Nugget doesn't really stream that much Siege anymore. And I think that he kind of got more annoying and played out. And the only other person that I know that streams Siege is also Macy J. But he has, his community is like, a, they're like kind of like a strict more community of people trying to like learn how to get better than what they're already good at <laughs> that's how i see it because there's a whole bunch of people that are really good in general and he plays with like a whole bunch of different like uk servers asian servers and stuff like that so he's more worldwide but it's very it's kind of like more niche to watch him i guess you can say he's he doesn't do anything crazy but you're not you're there for entertainment, but it's not funny laughter entertainment. It's more of like educational entertainment to try to learn the game better and become better at the game. That's how I see watching watching him. And like you're trying to learn and copy what he does because he's pretty crazy. Like his predictions for some people are wild. He's like, yeah, watch her. She's going to come in right there after I do this. Watch. <coughs> and he'll be calling out shit like that. 
Mm. So that's pretty crazy. But that COD community is pretty weird. I think there are a whole bunch of weird people inside of it, but they're also it COD community won't ever fully go down because they're mixed with people that play a whole bunch of like sports games in general. So they kind of go hand in hand with each other. They they're people who play sports, they play like two games outside of sports and it's COD and GTA and that's it. So I would say that Battlefield, I don't know where that community went. It's became like a niche community now. You rarely see videos. The only video I see of Battlefield now is the grandpa dude just hitting headshots at their headshots. The old vet, he's pretty lit. I would say he's pretty he's pretty fucking lit. But that, um, I don't know, man. It just feels like a lot of FPSs are just going down the drain, bro. Which I mean, kudos to the ones that are still alive like siege siege is i think is doing a really good job right now really well and then they're actually banning people like you actually see them say people who are banned which is pretty fucking lit because games need to ban people permanently even if you have to ban that playstation's like mac address or ip or whichever one it is a ban i don't know i haven't been in a tech space in years but yeah, if you're just able to ban those people, ban the cheaters, then it's all cool. It's all good. It makes the game more enjoyable, more fun, and you can actually see where you're at because there's so many people that's cheating in games nowadays, especially FPSs, hence Overwatch. Not over, actually, yeah, Overwatch, I would say Apex for sure. COD, I don't really care because. Cod, cod people are cod people. They're different. You can't really tell them much of anything. But other than that, yeah, a lot of these other people, they need to get their shit straight. Or there would be so many cheaters like Apex to where people are leaving. Like, yeah, Apex was dealing with a drought. Like, they were having mirages at this point if they thought the game was going to last. Cheaters, and then on top of that, your rank system is trash with dealing with LP. Crazy. Crazy. Like, y'all are lucky that the game was free. <laughs> That's what it is. But, nah, man. FPSs are going down. But on the plus side, MMORPGs up. Throne of Liberty is actually looking like it's really good. Ashes of Creation is looking like it's a really good game as well. Um, WoW, I don't know what the whole thing with WoW is, but WoW is still kicking it. Then you have uh, MOBAs. MOBAs are, I would say, doing pretty well. Smite 2. And then on top of that, for Smite 2, a lot of people keep saying, oh, they can't transfer over my skins, blah, blah, blah. Dog. It's a whole new... En- this two engines is behind. And they're updating it to the five. They were running Smite off of Unreal Engine 3. They're putting it on Unreal Engine 5. They already stated that they're not doing your skins because it would take two centuries almost three to get the skins so they're like for those people who put money into the game you will receive all of your gems that you spent in smite one you will receive all of them in smite two dog that is (coughs) for me that's close to 100k gems just for smite two And I think they will give roughly, I think, close to around eight. I think it was 8,000 gems that you got for $100. And let's say that I did spend 100K, that I did have 100K gems, okay, that I spent. This is being spent in the game. 
So one, let's see. How can I do this? All right, bet. So we're gonna do it like this. So if I had a hundred k gems, divide that by eight k. That's twelve point five. So that times a hundred. So in Smite, I spent roughly around a thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. If it comes out to where I have a hundred k gems. Think about it, bro. If you did, if you get Smite 2 and you see that you have 100k gems that they are giving you, they're roughly basically giving you $1,250. Why would you be mad, bro? Make it make sense. They're giving you a band of gems for this game. Because you already spent a band of gems in Smite 1. And they're like, here, this is your free section. You did a buy one, now you get one free. What the fuck? And people are and people want to complain because of skins and shit. Like they're not gonna make new better skins. Like, bro, get the fuck out of here, dog. Y'all just like that. Y'all just wanna bitch the bitch, bro. But Smite's on the up, which means MOBAs is on the up because Predecessor is also a thing too. And it's fully gonna it's supposed to be out this year fully to play on consoles. So that's a up. So I say in general, MOBAs are on the up. I don't know about League. I don't give a fuck about League. Fuck Dota 2. And the first Dota. Fuck both of them. But yeah, and then on top of that, survival games are on a up. And survival games are actually pretty fun whenever you own a server, such as one of my friends. He owns a server for Power World, and it's pretty dope. I'm probably actually going to play Power World after I finish up this podcast <laughs> because it's fucking addicting. Like making more games that are addicting are fun. So survival games are pretty addicting and they're actually pretty fun. And I know that there's like a whole huge community for Ark. Ark has been on the ups since I don't know when. They've been they've been up for almost a decade, it feels like. Because it's you're taming dinosaurs. And they added so much shit into it. To where it's crazy. See, I'll say that. And I'll also say like I think more along the lines of indie games are coming up on the ups. So yeah, Tekken 8 is pretty fun. Fighting games are definitely up. The Street Fighter, I think a 6, looks like it's doing pretty well. Mortal Kombat was really fun. And then I got Tekken 8. Tekken 8 is actually pretty fun as well too. I need to play through the story because I think I'm just going to platinum. I think I'm a platinum Tekken Tekken eight. It looks like it's not that hard to platinum, so I'm a platinum. But yeah, I'm telling y'all, man, I'm telling y'all. A lot of gaming gaming is changing, and where more people are playing more different games, it's just a seventy dollar price tag is kind of crazy. I will say that. I will say the seventy dollar price tag is pretty crazy. But other than that, hey man, look, y'all niggas need to expand y'all game li- library. Since since it is Black History Month, talking to all the fellow black people that think that they game, but all that you have is 2K, Madden, UFC, GTA, and COD. And I feel like I spoke to about 50% of the population of people that play sports games. That's literally each game that they have. They have, I would say, if they play in 2K, then they have Madden. To some people, they probably have USC as well to say that they have a fighting game. But it's still sports. It's just 
more of a different technical fighting game. You have COD, so you can't say that they shoot in. You, people can't say that you don't have a role playing game because you have GTA. But these are the five nigga elements of games that a lot of people have. Two sports, one that's fighting in sports, one that has role playing aspects and plus racing in there as well, too. So they can try to say that they have racing game as well. And then one shooting. And then they might try to cut off the con and say, I got GTA because it got shooting in there. So I, I'm playing a shooting game right now. So, yeah. Those are the those are like the infinity stones of a gaming nigga. <laughs> so pretty crazy. Expand your library, bro. At least start to get more into playing like more single player story games, like play Assassin's Creed, play God of, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, play play some more games, man. Expand your expand your space, bro. Expand it out. Get the get the Dragon Ball Z game. I know a lot of y'all niggas like Dragon Ball Z, and y'all try to keep it on the low. We know you like it. Get the game, especially the new one because the new one is supposed to be kind of like Tenkaichi, so I can have more niggas asses to whoop. I'm whooping all niggas asses. These hands are rated E for all niggas. Telling you. Telling you. Damn, it's been like a good hour and almost 15 minutes. Hour and 10. Crazy. Oh, and for those that actually ever make it this long into the podcast. Or basically skip to the end and you just want to see the end. I've almost forgot, but I haven't forgotten. I was going to tell y'all or talk a little bit more about why I say don't just do more, be more. I see it as it's more self-explanatory. You can always do a lot. But if you're... If you're faced and you're not getting that recognition, then you're always going to be doing more to be at that same spot. It's kind of like what I'm doing right now, I would say. I mean, like the podcast and stuff, but I'm not actually promoting myself. And I'm not actually becoming more to where I can put out an episode and I know for a fact I have a lot of people watching. Like, no. Like I of course I have to I have to do that. That's why I also say it as well is to not just do more but be more because you can always do a lot. You can always do a lot. But if it comes down to the point to where you hit that wall of like you're always doing it but you're not getting anywhere, it's because you're not becoming something to get past that point. So you you have to think about what what it is that you need specifically to get past that point. That's really all it is. Because you keep on doing more. But if you're if you're not becoming more, then you're not gonna be past that point. Get what I mean? Like say for like example of Yeah. You can you can always be practicing and playing like basketball and stuff like that and trying to make yourself better. But honestly, at the end of the day, not just you just being good is going to help you to that main goal of you wanting to be like an NBA player. Like you have to have also that entertainment aspect to you so you can become more. And then that's even in the NBA as well. Just think about it. Like they they've done so much for a lot of players in the NBA to get to that point, but your name would not ever be mentioned because you're not doing something to become more. 
like LeBron's name has been mentioned since like high school because he's like dunking on niggas and shit. And he's he's being more entertaining while being good at the same time. Like you just you have to have that entertaining aspect for that that such field to become the, like the best. It's like the final thing that you need to evolve. I guess you could say. So yeah, just think about what do y'all need to evolve and that's what's going to make y'all more. Because obviously, if you're doing something then that something gets to a point to where it's not working and you're like but like I'm already doing as much as I can. But you just haven't started like, how can I put it? You started, you haven't started applying yourself more into it to where you're now being more known for it. And that will bring you up to the next level that you're wanting to go. So that's why I always say, don't just do more, be more. So yeah, bro. Just start fucking being something. Damn. Fucking. You fucking mook. Be better. <laughs> that's all it is. That's, that's all about just not just doing more, just be better. But that's really it for me, of course. Y'all stay blessed out there. For me, it's raining. I'm staying inside, bruh. Staying inside, doing my own thing. Gonna be chilling because I don't have work today. But yeah, probably I don't know what I'm. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of the day. So I don't know. I'll figure that out. I I've been writing down daily goals and stuff like that. I haven't wrote them down this morning because I wanted to go ahead and just get this goal out of the way because this this was one of my goals was to actually record my podcast. But yeah, no, 100%. Y'all stay blessed out there, all right? Watch out for your own people. Spread more love. Get tired of all this hatred bullshit. Get tired of Twitter. <laughs> Fuck Twitter. But yeah, of course, y'all know what it is. I end up seeing y'all... Next month, I actually want to get to the point where I'm doing this live stream. But I need more of an actual audience to get there. So eventually, when I get to that point, I'm going to get to that point. But for now, y'all stay blessed. I'll let y'all know how school is basically going for the start of it. And y'all take it easy. I'll see y'all next month. Hey, was it March? March is next month. Y'all hear from me from March. <laughs> Or actually, I'm going to start putting videos and shit. But for the actual podcast, y'all hear from me for March. Thank you to all y'all. Y'all have a wonderful day. Don't forget, as I said before, don't just do more. Be more. Peace.